Clutch time, we do not flinch. Real brothers, we do not switch. Hit home runs with the right pitch. Who run the city? What to do when they hating on you? I feel like Kobe 2010. I'm taking an L, all I need is a win. What is this business? You know how they go. You playing the seats, now it's on the ground. Tune in now, gotta be in the know. Showtime, bitch, my butter blow. Yeah. 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 Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT Podcast. We got a special guest tonight. Pat Jameson is in the building. We appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to hop on with the Bench Mob. My brother, how are you doing tonight? Thank you. I appreciate you having me today. Um, I see you guys are slowly increasing, which is great to see. Um, so it's just it's a, it's a pleasure to be here, and I, I appreciate you inviting me today. Um, uh, we got to start off with congratulations, man. Pat is going to be over in the Philippines, full-time pro now, pro basketball player. He's been a pro for the longest because of his work ethic and how he practices, how he approaches the game. But start off with congratulations. And how are you feeling like? How was it for you when you got the news that you'll be able to go into one of the professional leagues over in the Philippines? Yo, man, it's it's uh it's been a two-year delay, you know, but like I always say, like, it's better late than never. Um, my original date was, I was supposed to leave May of 2020. And then, I've, you know, this whole COVID, this pandemic thing just slowed everything down. But, um, man, it feels good to just finally have a date. Uh, I fly out May 28th. And um, that's when it all starts. That's when all the work I put in since I was a baby is, is really just going to come to show, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. This is like, this, this has been my dream since I was a kid. And, and I'm, I, I can't wait to live it out. What, what's the like? What's the living situation going to be like when you're out there? Like, are you, have you got have you got that all figured out at this point? No, nah, I have a condo. Uh, my family helped me out. Um, it's going to be in Taguig, which is actually really it's a really nice area in the Philippines. Uh, my family, especially my parents, were, were big on my safety and just um, I guess adjusting to the whole thing. So they wanted me to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, so they got me a nice spot. It, it's, it looks beautiful. It's going to be in a tower. Uh, the gym is like a ten minute walk. They got a weight room in there. So that's really all I need. Um, <laughs> that will keep me in peace. And then uh, actually my parents are coming me for two weeks. So nice. they're going to accompany me for the first two weeks because they're born and raised there and they're going to show me around. Yeah. And, you know, because I won't have a car. It's going to be a different living situation. I just got to get used to the transportation and, and everything like that. Yeah. But um, like their Uber is a lot more cheaper over there than here. So I'll be all right. Get them work out. <laughs> yeah. yep. how long do you plan on being out there for man like i mean i, I, I guess just for the season and come back in the in the summer Those to work out seasons typically run like seven or eight months obviously mm-hmm. it extends as you win and go to playoffs and stuff like that mm-hmm. um definitely for off season i do want to visit my family here when i can mm-hmm. um but that really all depends on the season schedule so uh yeah we'll talk about that as time goes on but for now i'm just really just looking forward to that opportunity so if there is a chance where I could be here for the holidays with my family, of course, I, I'll, I'll gladly come back. But for now, I mean, I'm just focused on, on being there and, and just really just getting my feet wet and starting my career professionally. Yo, I'm just ecstatic about it. Like, I was even telling my wife, like, you've put in the work for a very, very, very long time, man. Yeah. Every, um, St. Peter's situation, so NJIT, and now to be finally here, and mm-hmm. seeing a labor for you what has your journey been like with everything that you've gone through from like we mentioned st peter's njit to jcc days ymca days to get to this point now that you're actually a pro you can a- actually say i'm a professional basketball player like i'm mm-hmm. getting paid what i love yeah that journey man it's been it's been a really long journey and there's been a lot of bumps just like everybody else, everybody has no adversity. They had adversity. I think the, the key thing is just, just to find a way to keep going, no matter how hard it gets. Like, 
like Richard, my trainer will always tell me, you know, it doesn't storm forever. Like weather the storm because eventually the sun will come out, you know? So even though I would go through a bump in the road, I just kept that in my mind. Like, all right, I just have to stay focused, stay in the gym, no matter what happens. Um, Cause eventually the sun will come out. Um, especially in this game of basketball, like, you know, there's coaches that don't believe in a player, no matter a player could be a great player, but if you're stuck in that bench, you know, you can't show that. Um, but it's just, it's really just a mental challenge. It's really a mental like challenge at that point. Um, see how bad you want it. Cause it's very easy to give up. It's really easy to say, you know what? I just want to give up. Let me just focus on something else. Let me just get a nine to five, start making money. You know I mean? I can't lie. That crossed my mind a couple of times, especially in college where it was like, yeah, I'm playing division one, but I'm on the bench. So, you know, like, how am I going to get to the pro level being on the bench? So that definitely struck my mind. But like I said, just that, that, that grind, just that mentality, just keep going. Um, so now, now I see that, you know, there's, there's light at that tunnel now. So that's why I'm looking forward to this opportunity playing professional in the Philippines. Oh, I want to touch on too, right? So you mentioned the nine to five and doing things like that. How, crucial was the support from your parents because mm -hmm. this after a certain point a lot of parents be like all right look it's not happening yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have yeah. to work you're gonna have to do something and i know from knowing you personally your parents have been support your brother from day one rich mm -hmm. that been for you because like you said it's crossed your mind but when you got a support system like that how were how you know vital was your parents in this process for you no, for sure. So, I mean, I graduated college like a year and a half ago. Um, and like I said, I was supposed to leave to the Philippines in May of 2020 and start my career professionally then. Then COVID hit. Then it's like, man, when am I going to go out there? Like, I need to start making money. I'm not making money right now. So even my parents were like, you know, why don't you consider getting a job? But I was like, you know what? If I get a job, that will put me less hours to train. And when my opportunity comes, I might not be as ready. I was like, no, nah, I, I just want to train full time so when the opportunity comes like I'm at my peak I'm on my best so fortunately my parents supported me and they've been supporting these this past two years they could easily said no nah, Pat I'm not giving you money you have your college education go get a job go make money they could have easily said that but I was blessed and fortunate for them to just you know at least help me financially um for these past couple of years where it, it was hard it was really hard because everything was so uncertain with this whole pandemic I, I really didn't have a date when I was going to leave and when stuff would open up back in Asia. They're one of the most strictest countries in terms of opening up. But uh, luckily now they're, they're pretty much back to normal. So, um, yeah, it, it really worked out these past two years. Um, I'm glad I kept that mentality because, like I said, if I were to get a job, like, I wouldn't be at my peak right now. There's no way because then I would have to work nine to five and maybe I could get a workout before that. But after I'd be dead tired, I'd probably just be asleep, you know. Yeah. And I, I was able to just work out two or three times a day these past few years. And I feel I feel great. Oh, walk me through what a typical workout looks like for you on the court, because I feel That's, like okay. I, um, yeah, I feel like a lot of people would benefit from hearing that, like especially because people think this, this stuff is sweet. So I wake up in the morning. That really depends. Sometimes I wake up as early as like 5 a.m. Some days I sleep in a little bit because uh, I mean, it's it's healthy to sleep in. But the first thing I want to do in the morning is just get my shots in. So I always get like a thousand plus makes every day. Uh, then I'll do that, do some shoot, shooting drills, stuff I'll see in a game. Then I'll rest for a couple hours. Um, if, if Rich is free, I'll, I'll work out with him in, in the afternoon and get more skilled training, you know, like ball handling, other things. Uh, just try to not be a one dimensional player, work on, you know, pull ups, uh, coming off screens, stuff like that. Um, then I'll rest again, get some food. And I usually end with a lift at night like around like like six or seven ish so i could be in bed by like nine or ten how many days a week are you doing this so i work out pretty much every day i give myself a rest when my body really needs it so i really uh i would probably say i rest one day out of the month if my body really needs it wow yo that that is incredible bro that is incredible. I mean, I, obviously, I, I hear about it from afar. People hear about it from afar. But people who hear of you and know of you um, mm -hmm. and, and even have known you and met you before. But there are a lot of people out here who are very much, you know, very much want to, who say they want to chase this dream, but don't really understand what goes into it. Yeah, put that work. You have to work. Right. Also, another thing I, I emphasize with them this past like year and a half is the recovery work, stretching 
yo, that's a difference maker. I've been stretching a lot and it's been helping my body so much. And yeah. just like little nags and little injuries, like finally, like I used to have like heel pain, but ever since I've been stretching and, and doing all this like yoga stuff, I got my body been feeling really good. So that's one thing I also did this past, this past year. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to go to the PBA or NBA, but I'm going to take you up on that. I get a little nagging pains. I got, I got like a, I got like a bruised quad right now. Yeah. yeah. Some guy couldn't guard me. He clipped me instead. So you know how that go, but I mean, you know how that go, but um, yeah. nah, man, I mean, yo, talk, how about the process of actually making this all happen? Right. Like did you hire an agent? What'd that look like? And how, you know, obviously it's been years in the making now with the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. So, I mean, this whole process, obviously growing up as, as a kid, like every ball player here in America, we all want to play in the NBA. Um, you know, as time goes on and uh, reality kind of hits, it's like, all right, I still want to play basketball professionally. So what could I do? So my dad, my parents were born and raised in the Philippines and they know how big basketball is. They watched the PBA growing up. So uh, my dad would always tell me, hey, Pat, if you don't make the NBA, you know, the PBA is the NBA of the Philippines. So around late towards my high school, I started paying attention to the PBA. I started watching games, just taking notice of some of the players. Um, and then I just like I, I became a fan of the PBA, just uh, take notice of the league. And so I really saw how big basketball was in the Philippines. And they, they show a lot of love. The crowd out there is crazy about basketball. Um, so going into college, I, I still followed it. And then towards the end of my college, I, um, I yeah, I met one of my agent through there's a Filipino basketball league around here in America that I play in. And when you excel in that, you build connections. Um, so I was getting a whole bunch of awards like MVPs. So they connected me with an agent out there in the Philippines. And he pretty much just been helping me for the past two years. Uh, he set me up with like some big interviews out there in the Philippines. I kind of got my name out there. Um, but obviously the main thing is to, is to be out there playing. So he helped me put my name out there a little bit through like interviews and stuff and showing my highlights. But now once I get out there, my game will speak, you know? Mm -hmm. For you, right? And I know from personal experience, especially the JCC days, dudes would get mad at you when you needed one more player and you were getting shots up. You was like, I got to get my shots up. I got to get my shots up. For you, how do you balance that out of getting your shots in, getting your workouts in, getting your skill workout in? and actually playing and putting it into the game process? Like, how do you balance it for you? Uh, well, for me, at least these past couple of years, like, I've been playing in leagues as well. I usually have a league game every Sundays. Um, I haven't had one in a couple of weeks now. I guess the season's over. Uh, but in terms of pickup, like, at least now at Lifetime, it's more organized. So I know when guys are coming. There's They pretty much, like, set it up. I think it's every Tuesday, it's Thursdays, and Saturdays. So um, I know what time to go. If I want to play pickup, I know what, exactly what time I want to go. And when I get my training, I know exactly what time I got to go, you know? So recently it's been more organized. Uh, I like to, obviously I like to get my training in first just to get out the way. And then once I'm done training, then it's like, I can have fun with the game and, and play a little pickup, you know? That's good. Cause I, I remember back in the days, bro, Jokers used to grab, Jokers used to get mad at Pat. We need one more. <laughs> Go five on five and like yo, Pat, you trying to play? Nah, I still got another three hundred shots to make. <laughs> Respect to yeah. that. Respect. Now, to you, that, you remember my brother would always be on me too. He's like, Nah, Pat, I won't get you better. You gotta, you gotta get those reps in. Right. <laughs> Sometimes right. he'd go to he go to the weight room and I and I'd sneak in a game. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> and then come downstairs like, bro, what, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Other thing too. Uh, shout out to your pops though. Shout out to your pops. I just I just want to really again. Shout out to your parents, your pop saying, one, to have the belief in you, like, yo, if you don't make the NBA, here's another option. From mm -hmm. then, the belief and the support was there. It wasn't like, if you don't make the NBA, all right, you're going to do something else. No, like, he was like, all right, so this is the, this is the backup plan. We're going to do this. We're going to go to this approach. Mm -hmm. Again, obviously, your pops is not on. I've talked to your pops a couple of times, of course, JCC days, but tell him on my behalf. Kudos to him for real, for real. Yeah, he's been a real supportive like throughout these whole years, and even now, like he, he's so into it. Like he always watches Philippine basketball his whole past years, and he just gives me words of encouragement, like Pat. Like I can really see you go out there and make it big. Like he, he definitely has a more not just him, but my entire family. They're so supportive, so I appreciate each and every one of them. For real, that. 
it's easy to believe in what you see. I feel like, you know, like in your situation, you know, you're playing, you, you show people how much you love the game, right? I mean, it's easy to mm-hmm. buy into what you can actually see when it's tangible. You're out there working out, getting up at 5 a.m., getting three workouts a day. You would take one rest day a month. I mean, hey, man, like it's, it's going to be real easy to believe in someone who's doing that, you know, whether you're your parents or there's someone around you that just met you for the first time. Like that, you can respect it when you see it. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like it's, when, for, when for sure. it's yeah. you, you, your actions speak louder than your words, right? So at the end of the day, you, you, you've backed it up and you've earned this opportunity. Yo, one thing I've always wondered, and I've, you know, because I, I know people, I know you. I mean, Ru- Russ Ayala is my guy over at Rutgers. I think he's played with you a couple times, and we, me and him have talked. And I, I always, like, I always ask, like, if you had to describe your game, like, in, like just and as many words as you'd like, what would you say your game's like? Like, what would you say? How would you describe yourself? So uh, my main thing is shooting. That's been my whole thing my whole entire life. Uh, recently, I've been adding a lot of other things in my game. So Richard would always tell me, you don't want to be one dimensional because that's easy to stop. Easy to stop. If you're just a shooter, you just got to press up on the guy and, and run him off the line. So I've been doing other things like mastering that pull up, mastering that floater. I got the floater. Um, just getting your teammates involved, um, doing the little things, setting screens um, and playing smart. Because there's there's a two different types of basketball. There's, there's real constructive basketball and there's pickup ball where guys are just dribbling, taking 10 dribbles and scoring. Like you don't want to do that, especially at the pro level. You're not going to take more than like four dribbles to the score. Right. So just scoring those simple ways, like I said, pull ups, catch and shoot threes, coming off screens, down screens, ball screens. Like you're not, I mean, yeah, you want to have that in your bag. Just, I, I guess, have it sometimes, especially when the shot clock's winding down. But for the most part, like I think scoring either no dribbles or scoring within three to four dribbles is, is really what you want to master if you want to play at a, at a high level, whether it's high level high school, college, or, or on to the pros. Right. So I think, like I said, shooting is my main thing. I can handle the rock and I can find the open, no, and I can make the, the smart right passes. I think that best describes my game. Scoring playmaker. Scoring playmaker. Like the, yeah. It's a consensus. It sounds there, like yeah. I've always been a scoring guard. That, that's, that's been my thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, and I knew this from when I played with you years ago, but I haven't played, I haven't played with you in so long. Obviously, you're much uh-huh. better now than you were then, right? Your game is Yeah, complete. yeah. You know, so I've always been curious. Like, whenever people play with you, like, when Russ said he's played with you, I'm like, yo, what's his game like now? Like, you know, because he works mm-hmm. out like crazy. So where is he at now? I'm so I'm always so curious. Because back yeah. then, I was just like, man, he was a flamethrower. I think he let, he let the thing go. It's a, it's a bucket. He might as well start running the other way. Nah, man, they, they double team me in those leagues. They throw boxing ones on me. I'm sure. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, sure. I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to play a little bit. Like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just a rec league game. Why are you guys in a boxing one throwing doubles? Like, <laughs> Like I had a game like last Sunday. I was like, I was like, but remember when when D book he was like, yo, you guys are really doubling and pick up. Right. Yo, I feel like D book, like, yo, let me just let me just have fun right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was real, man. Yeah. <laughs> so and I want to ask too, right? So you're you're going over here now, you have an agent and whatnot. Has it been discussed what you know, what role they want you to play on this team? I mm-hmm. asked that because We've had conversations with Wayne, and Wayne told me this story. He said when he first – his first contract, I think in, he went into Mexico, I want to say, right? He mm-hmm. got off the plane. There was a coach there waiting, like, yo, where do you like the ball at? With a clipboard, like, where do you want it at? Yo, oh, yeah. Please, please work for you. Like, mm-hmm. from Jump Street, they was like, yo, we're going to get you to rock. Where do you want it at? For you, has it been discussed? Do you know what your role is going into this situation? So right now, uh, I didn't specifically sign with a specific team. I have four different teams that I'm going to work out with the moment I land. Um, my agent told me, give everyone a shot. Um, see which coach really, you know, believes in you the most. Gives you the most, I guess, playing. T- I, you can't really discuss the exact minutes you'll get, but you could kind of feel it, you know, when you're there. The love he shows you, how he treats you, um, and what role. I know they definitely want me shooting. That's one thing every coach always wants me is my shooting. Um but when I get there, it's, it's really going to be up to me how I how I perform and how I get there and how I match up with other guys. Um, so it's hard to answer that question. All I know is they want me to shoot and whatever happens and how I perform in those workouts, I guess that that will determine my my role in, 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 the, in the game time, you know. With with the, the four teams you're trying out for, right? Over there, how is, if you don't mind sharing, what would be – 
you know, like what's the pay structure and whatnot over there in this professional league? Like, how does that go about? Are there certain levels? Like, what is it when you first get there? Because, you know, like in the NBA, you can't get paid, yeah. but because you're a rookie, like, what is uh-huh. the pay structure? So the, the big bucks are in the PBA. That's the top professional league. Top guys in the PBA make up to, I think the star players get almost 200 plus thousand US dollars. And that's like multi-million Philippine pesos. In the MPBL, which is another pro league I'm looking at, that could range maybe like 40 to 50,000 US dollars. But that's, that's a lot of money in Philippine pesos. That could get you a long way out there already. So you're over there, you're living comfortably. Um and for me, I have to play in these lower professional leagues first because it's a requirement for locals since I'm counted as a local. I'm not counted as an American import uh, because I have my Philippine passport with my parents being born there. And one of the requirements for every local is to play in these lower professional leagues first to qualify you for the PBA draft. So I think the next PBA draft, it might be, I think, January of 2023, around that time. So from the moment I land until that time, I'll be playing in these lower professional leagues um, but like I said, they still get paid pretty good. And especially in those Philippine pesos, you'll be living all right. Um, so, so yeah, uh, until then, but that's the dream though. Those big bucks in the PBA, that's really where it's at. That's the dream. That's where I eventually want to get. Nice. Definitely get there with your work. I think I have no doubt you'll definitely get there, man. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, what, who are some influences on you, right. In terms of how you've developed your game, guys you've watched, um, at all levels, not even just the NBA, but at all levels. Like, who's who's been an inspiration to you from a basketball perspective? Um, so growing up as a little kid, uh, I loved Allen Iverson. He was a small guard that scored a lot. I guess that kind of just motivated me, like, yo, I could be short, but I could still get, like, 30, you know? Um, and then as I got older, it became Steph Curry. Like, yo, he's a great shooter. He's also not that tall, and he drops, like, 30, 40, you know? And then, um, then Kyrie came. And he's like, yo, he's from my hometown. And he's look how big he's getting. So that inspired me a lot. Um, man, there's a lot. Jeremy Lin, he helped the Asian community so much. A lot of people never thought, you know, we Asian people could hoop. Uh, and then Lin Sandy came and, and it, he, he kind of just proved, you know, no matter what race you are, like if you put in the work, like a, a hooper, if you, if you could hoop, you could hoop, regardless of height, race, whatever. Um, so, yeah, just I, I love underdogs, too. Isaiah Thomas, you know, he motivates me. The fact he never gives up, no matter, <laughs> no matter what. Like, no, he could sign five 10-day contracts. He's still going. He could be out the league for a year or two. He's still going. Like, like those are guys that I really look up to. Like, it's like that perseverance, man. It, it, it inspires me just to see other guys. Like, like I said, everybody goes through adversity. Everybody hits a wall. But if you really push through, if you keep working hard, you know, you keep, you keep your faith. Like, like I mentioned before, like it don't storm forever, you know? Yo, speaking of Isaiah Thomas, at some point, maybe when you get over there, you need to have somebody like TJ Reagan record and document your story on the set, bro. I think somebody- uh, Dan, Dan wants to do that. Cause you know, Dan been into like these films. Recently. Perfect. Dan need to do that. Though. Somebody needs to really be able to tell your story because the people that you mentioned, that give you inspiration, I'm sure your story can inspire somebody else. Like, Yeah, for sure, yeah. And I think it'll be more impactful coming from somebody that's not the Isaiah Thomas of the world, the Allen Iverson of the world, already there. You're still there. You're in that process, and you're getting there. Like, for you, Greg asked something great earlier, like, how would you describe your game? Who would you say, if you had to choose, who would you say is a player – in the NBA, PBA, college that you would compare your game to? Who is your comp player? So in the PBA, they've been comparing me to Jimmy Alapag. He's one – he's retired now, but he was one of the te- – he was one of the best point guards to ever play in the PBA. He was a sniper, great shooter. Um, he's actually an assistant coach for the Kings G League now. Um, so they compare me to him a lot. Guys like to compare me to, to Curry, Steph Curry, because of shooting. Um, and I do watch a lot of film on him, um, just because even Rich told me, like, the fact that I'm a shooter, I could simplify my game. Like, I don't have to make all these moves. Like, it could just be a simple hezzy, look like I'm going to shoot, and guys will go out flying. That's the easy blow-by. Yeah. So just watching those little moves, like, it definitely helps my game a lot. Um, 
So, so yeah, I would say those two. In the NBA, I'd say Steph Curry. and PBA, I'd say Jimmy Ellibug. Rich is good for that. Rich is good for that. I, yeah. Rich, is, Rich is literally, I don't care what nobody said. That's one of the top trainers. I don't care no, what. Facts. Because, man, like I said before, like, it's, it's cool to have it in your bag. It's cool to have those moves in your bag. And obviously, yeah, yeah, work on it. There's nothing wrong with working on it. Like, I still work on it just to have it, you know, like in my game. But you want to simplify your game, especially at the high level, because if you're doing all that, guys, the coach is going to look at you like you're crazy. You know, you have to score within the system. And scoring within the system means simplifying your game, meaning, like I said, scoring off the catch or scoring off three or four dribbles. Yep. No, that's that's a great point, bro. That's a great point. I mean, it, it, it's so crazy, like, this all coming to fruition. I, I guess one question I have, and we're kind of going out of order here, and that's cool, whatever, man. We're just having a conversation. But for you to have persisted as long as you have, from NJIT to, to St. Peter's, to everything that's happened to this point, there's a genuine love for basketball that you have. And this is a question you've probably been asked a million times. But the, the love you have for basketball is rare. It's, it, people don't love anything this much, anything. It, it, sometimes people don't love anyone in their life this much, right? Like, let's just be honest, right? Yeah. So where does that come from? Like, what, how'd you fall in love with basketball, man? Like, where, where did that happen? I love, that? I, love uh, I mean, like I said, my family grew up loving the game. They put a basketball in my hand. I mean, my dad told me he put a basketball in my hand when I was in the crib. He said I had a little mini hoop in my crib and I started shooting. Um, and I just always had a basketball. Like, Dan would have games in middle school and I'd pull up at halftime just shooting. Um, and I guess as time just went on, like that love just carried on and, even as I got older and, and times got tough, it was like every every time I hit that court, like I just felt like it was my calling, I guess. And I did, I, if, whether it sounds crazy or not, like every time I touched that court and played a game, it was like, yo, like I feel like I, this was meant for me. Like I feel alive when I'm on that court. So it's really an unexplainable feeling. I don't know. I just I just love it. Do you have any hobbies outside of basketball? Is a question. Uh, well, yeah, hanging out with my friend, uh, hanging out with my girlfriend a lot. I love to eat. We love to eat. Um, I we eat. love to eat a lot of Asian food. Shout out to like K-Pot BBQ. Man, I've been, that, uh, I'm just thinking, oh, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that all you can eat stuff, man. Yeah. Those are, <laughs> I love to eat. I love trying like different foods. That's oh, and also, also 2K. I play 2K too. That's, that's a hobby. Some video games. That's a perfect transition because I wanted to ask about that because you mentioned your dedication to making sure like you you're asleep by nine you're getting your eight hours of sleep you're getting a thousand shots in where does your diet fall in your dedication <sighs> my diet oh man that's hard because I, like i said i love to eat um i try my best to stay away from like sweets too much but i still eat them uh, i just gotta make sure i run them off like so i i like to run like a mile sometimes and make sure i'm burning it all so even though if i'm eating like unhealthy at times as long as I feel like I'm working out and just burning it all off, I feel good. Hey, hey, let me ask you, man. What's your, what's your, you are, you obviously mentioned uh, the Korean barbecue. Do you have any other guilty pleasures? Cause I, 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 I am a man of many guilty pleasures of food. So I, I'd like, I'd like other, to know. Other foods, other foods. Yeah. Like, well, you know, um, like some, people are, some people are stuck with Chick-fil-A. I don't know what you want. So you I know, there's a spot in um, East Hanover. It's called Sakana Sushi. I don't know if you ever heard of it. I, I feel like it's on Route 10. It's on Route 10, yeah. I feel like I worked no, in there. You no, that, that, that's, a great, that's a great spot to have a date, too. Like, man, that, those shoes, like, it's unlimited. You pay, like, oh, wow. I mean, it obviously varies from lunch and dinner, but it's definitely worth, it's worth it. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. got to that up. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you been keeping up to date with NBA playoffs and whatnot? Oh, yo, yes. Uh, I was kind of – I was doing with the Nets. I thought the Nets – I'm going to say this live. I thought they were going to be the lowest seed to ever win a championship. <laughs> all right. I don't think you were alone. I don't think you were alone in that, though. Yeah. A yeah. Lot, a lot of people did not expect a sweep. I didn't. That 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 game one changed everything, that that buzzer. I think yeah. – I mean, my it would have been a totally different series because they would have stole one away and, you know, the whole momentum. But, man, yeah. yeah. That was, that was that was you waste a performance from, from Kyrie like that. You know, it's hard to recover. It's hard to recover. It's hard to recover. No, he, game know? one, he played. He played amazing game one. I don't know. He, they they should have won that. 
flipping people off, making shots from all over the place, hitting crazy bank shots. Facts. He's he is he's incredible. He's yeah. he, I don't I don't I've never seen a guy that's skilled on a, on a basketball court. No, I, I always tell people I think he's the most skilled player of, of all time. Like people don't understand like skill and the best player. Like I'm not saying he's the greatest Facts. player of all time. I'm saying he's the most skilled player of all time because I mean skill wise he could do everything. Like you know what yep. I'm saying. When I, when I, whenever I say that, like guys get mad at me, but I'm like, yo, I'm not saying he's the best ever. I'm saying he's the most skilled ever. It's a difference. You can't talk, you can't talk basketball with everybody, Pat. That's the thing. That's Casual, the thing. casuals out there. Yeah, there's a lot of casuals out there. And the skill and be skill and best are two different conversations. You yeah. know, like to be the like, you know, you talk about best players of all time. You're talking about a guy like LeBron, an all around guy. Exactly. Right? Like yep. maybe, right, but he's not the most skilled guy a conversation. He's not in that conversation. He's not with KD and Kyrie and Jordan mm-hmm. and Kobe. He's not there. That's skill. That's yeah. totally different. It's you know, it's yeah. you know, it's okay. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing. It's a weird place we live in where everybody has kind of has an opinion, but not every everybody has a microphone to say what they think, but not everybody knows what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> so <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> so there's a lot of that. But yeah, no, that's a good point, bro. So you mentioned Kyrie before I talk about who you think going to win and all that. You mentioned Kyrie, and you mentioned that game one. Historic, top of the line, great game. Where do you stand, where do you view trash talking for you personally as a player? Do you engage in it? Do you decide not to? Are you more of the Steph Curry kind of subtle, might do a little dance, but I'm not going to say much? Where does that, where does that factor in your game, trash talking? So for me, like, I stay away from it, especially at first. Like, if you're not talking first, like, I'm just going to just play ball. Like, but if, if I really encounter somebody that's, like, annoying, like, just talking trash the whole time, sometimes I'm like, yo, all right, I got I to gotta say something after I score this dude. Like, he's getting on my nerves. So sometimes I do it. But for the most part, no, I, I, I try to just let my game speak. It's only rare times where they're really just constantly just saying stuff, just talking, just talking. They're not even doing anything. That kind of gets annoying, you know. But like I like I said, for the most part, no. Nah, I just I just want my game to speak for the most part. So who do you have in these playoffs? Now the Nets is out. We see Boston lose game one mm-hmm. without Chris Middleton. <laughs> the Bucks pull it off. Golden State gets a big game one win in Memphis. Where who who you see coming out west? Who you see coming out the east? Well, I mean, I don't have a specific team I, I'm a fan of. I just like my favorite players. So I watch Curry all the Steph Curry all the time. But right now, I really want Chris Paul to get a ring just because like he's one of the greatest point guards ever. And I, I kind of want him to just have at least one ring, you know? I think he deserves one. Oh, 100 percent I think anybody yeah. would agree with that. Are, are 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 you nervous? I mean, well, you're not a fan of them, but I, I, I'm nervous for him. Going up, going up against that Mavs team and Luka and the way Jalen Brunson's playing right now, that's a good team, man. That's a really good team. It is. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know, like, last if he continues on, obviously he's not going to go 14 for 14 every game. But if he <laughs> yeah. plays somewhat to that level, if he just sticks at somewhat around that level of play, they're going to be really tough to beat, you know? Yeah, facts. 100%. And him and Debo, Debo is incredible. Debo is okay. just yeah. – you know, he's an amazing player. And Macau Bridges is an amazing player. So, they, you know, they should win the series. But, you know, I'm a little, I get a little nervous about it when I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to ask a couple more before we get you out of here. Uh, you've been on the show multiple times. So, the kind of the with the quickness segment isn't really needed. We know your go-to meal. We know all that type of stuff. But I still want to <laughs> ask you about to go. You're going over there to the Philippines. Game day. On game day. What are you listening to? What's in your rotation of music? Game day. Um, well, first, I got to make sure I get my shots in, like, at least just lightly. Uh, music. Oh, man, there's a lot. Uh, what's my playlist? Like, I like Lil Baby a little bit. Uh, who else I like? I just listen to whatever's like, whatever. Sometimes I just pop in the radio, like 97.1 or 105.1. I'm not going to have that in the Philippines, so I'm just going to have to shuffle my Apple Music. Um, yeah, sometimes little TJ, he's an underrated rapper, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that, that's, I think that's, nah, that's it so far. So rap's so, that main, that main genre for, for you, though. Yeah, especially right. before basketball, yeah. I like, I still like the slow R&B, but that's more for after when I'm relaxing, you know? <laughs> you gotta wind down. Yeah. I was about yeah. to say, 
sometimes on 97.1, you might turn and they got Keisha Cole on. That's not getting you right before the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to write playlists when you get over there for sure. Some some Drake like pump up songs, but not his slow songs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Drake singing in your head before the game. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I'm trying to get in that zone. Like, I'm not trying to listen, not love songs, not not love songs before the game. That's after. That's after. Question: If you, you know, if you feel comfortable answering, so you mentioned one of the things that you like doing outside of basketball is spending time with your girlfriend. How has that been? Now that you're gonna be able to go overseas, has that you know crossed your mind? Have y'all talked about it? What has that? transition that conversation men like with you now going pro and you said it could be six to seven months mm-hmm. what has that for you and for her in regards of the relationship yeah so like you mentioned before like with family support like i consider her my family already at this point and she's part of that support system so that's something i'm, I'm so grateful for like no matter like even though i'm going away like it's, it's been my dream forever so she supports it um and in terms of like the whole long distance thing, like I was in Florida for a little bit for like seven months during COVID, if you remember. Um, I had to leave New Jersey because I mean everything was shut down here. So my grandma lives in Boca Raton, Florida, and she actually invited me to stay there. Um, so we experienced it already in terms of long, like long term. But I just feel like our connection is strong enough to like we could overcome anything. Like we'll be seven years this this June. We've been together for seven years, starting this June seventh. So I feel like she's like my best friend and she like supports, we support each other. I support her. She supports me. She's about to graduate in two weeks. So I'm super proud of her. She's about to graduate from NJIT with a IT degree. And I know she already has job, job offers lined up. So um, the good thing is like, we have that great connection where we both support each other and we both support our dreams. So, so no matter, like I said, no matter what we go through, I think we could, we could persevere it. Yo, that's Tom put in. That's not like, hey, Greg, what you got, like 15 years y'all been together? <laughs> nah, it's been, been. We started uh, junior, late junior year of my high school year. Yeah, we've been together forever. Yeah, I know something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know something about that. It goes nine. Been with his girl for a minute, too, like. Yeah. Nine years, yeah. Yeah, after a while, you kind of know each other to get back of your hand, you know. So it's like, you know, I, I figured, you know, I, I when you said that you've been together for a long time, it makes sense. You going to the PBA, you being you chasing your dreams, it's obviously nothing but happy for you, and you guys are going to be fine. That communication is strong, and I think that's the biggest thing is communication, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, communication is key, and, and especially in this generation, like I always feel like when you find one, you know, just stick with that one because this this generation man could get crazy. Oh yeah, you know? <laughs> but this whole yeah, social. Yeah. Like, yeah. It can get real crazy real fast, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Like, I I'm think I'll fall back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's fall back. That's what Pat, hey, man. No, nah, I feel you, Pat. I'm the same way, bro. Uh, the, uh, we have the same mindset there. No different. Yeah. yeah. Before we get you out of here, man, um, two more things. Like, so at this point now, right? You're about to be pro. You're flying out May 28th. Is there anything? anything at all that you would change about your process, your journey, your career, anything at all that you would change? Yeah. So I get asked this question often. Um, and I'm not saying it cause I regret it. Like it was, it was a dream to play division one basketball. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like that's the highest level of college basketball ever. But I always tell kids like whether it's D one, D two or D three, like chase the role, chase whatever coach um, really just gives you the opportunity, regardless of level. Because any level in college, that's good basketball. Um, coming out of high school, I had many offers from from even lower offers where I could have been probably the man. But uh, back in high school, I kind of had a big head where it was like, if I'm not going D1, like I'm not taking these lower offers. And I tell these kids, like, that was kind of my mistake. I was a little too arrogant. Um, I think that's one thing I would probably change. If, th- if there's one thing I could change, it would be my college career. I would, you know, I would, well, probably would, would, I would rather start in a lower level Right now, with the mentality I have, I'd rather start in a lower level than be on a bench of a D1, you know. And I try to I try to tell these kids, man, but they're they're hard headed. Yes. I mean, I can't do anything. They, I did the same thing when I was that age, you know. I was hard headed too. Pat, you're speaking real. You're speaking 
you're doing you're doing God's work right now because I coach uh, I coach AAU and I got a lot of these guys on my team and some guys are seat in all prep and you know something about that being a seat in all prep I got some guys in there I got guys on my team that are you know high school juniors they're 17 U <laughs> and all of them talking about they're going D1 and I'm like you know it's just funny because they don't even they don't work half as hard as you did yeah, right? yeah. you know what I'm saying like uh, yeah you, you, it's just it's madness when I hear it and like it's it's not it's not because I don't want to support the dreams of people that are the people and, and things of that nature. Right. Obviously you want to be there and support people and you want to be, you know, a, a beacon of positivity for people and, and push them to be the best person themselves. But what people don't understand is that D3 basketball, D2 basketball, it's all a blessing. Juco basketball. Facts, it's all facts. a blessing, man. It's all a Yo, blessing. Even if, I love at, like, even if you look at pros overseas, most guys are from like D2s, D3s. Like oh, yeah. they're from, they're from NIA, NAIAs. They're from, like from these random schools that you never heard about. And, yeah. like, they're pros and they're nice. Like, you still see them. You know what you I'm saying? There's, like, a situation, too. Like, you might have a guy who, who had a bunch of offers from D1s, but he didn't have the grades or whatever that mm-hmm. happened, right? Or maybe there was some off-the-court stuff, and now they're at a D2, they're at an NAIA, they're at a JUCO, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Or they, you know, and, and so it's a lot of different things, a lot of different practices, but the Hoopers are everywhere at the end That's of the day. They're yeah. everywhere. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, it's crazy. Something, something I learned throughout this whole process, man. There's there, there's comp there's competition everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, there's especially in college, there's no such thing as low level basketball in college. Like I they, these kids, man, they disrespect like D3 basketball. They'll be like, oh no, that, that's that's trash. Mm. I'm like, yo, go, go to go to a D3 game, yo. And yeah, these guys and these guys were probably the stars of their high school still. And, and you what I'll say about D3 ball too, bro, is a lot of the systems and all of the stuff, the sets you see running in the that are being run in the NBA and being run at the D1 level, this it's all being originated at, at that D3 level. Yeah, like exactly. That, the yeah. platoon system, five guys in five at a time. That's at the D3 level. The yeah. fast break system, like the run, the run and shoot, like that started down in the D3 level. It was there first. It was originated there first. A lot of that, the revolutionary stuff that happened to the game schematically happens at the D3 level, D2 level, the NAIA. It happens there. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's an incredible level of basketball. And, I mean, we got we got guys going to, going pro from D three all the time. There's of a guy, course, Ryan, uh, Ryan Terrell from uh yesterday, yeah. going yeah. going to the pros, right? Dunk, Dunk Robinson started off at D three. Yep. Um, yeah. what's it, I think Derek White started off as a walk on on a D two. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, and that, that that's one thing. Like like I said, like I don't want to have any regrets. It's still a blessing that I, I achieved that goal of playing Division one. But like, if I could go back back in time. Going into my college career, I should have been more smart. I should have been like, yo, it's just a blessing to play college basketball. Let me chase whatever coach gives me the best opportunity. And that's what I try to preach to these, to these young kids now, um, these high school hoopers. Like, I just want them to, to just go to where they're you, – you'd rather be in a place where you're loved, even though it's a lower level, than be at, the, that, be at the top and just be on the bench and the coach really doesn't really care, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Before we get you out of here, if somebody was doing, if Dan was doing the autobiography of your career, of your story, what would you title it? The marathon, something, something along that line that has to do with like a marathon or perseverance or just something that I would find. A, some, we'll find something fancy to say, but those are <laughs> words that I want to um those are like synonyms that I want to fit into that title, like marathon or perseverance or something like someone, someone in between those lines, you know? Got you, got you. Well, we are grateful and thankful that you hopped on, that you took time out with us. Of course, we'll be lo- looking forward to when you get back after that first year, we'll have you on again. We can recap how the first year went for you. But again, we are thankful and appreciative that you took time to hop on with the bench mob as we tell all of our guests. This is your home podcast. If you ever want to hop on, you ever need to talk about something, shoot, if you're in the Philippines and want to talk about you, I just dropped 45. (laughs) (laughs) Send send the DM. We'll set up the Zoom ASAP with no problem. (laughs) This is your home podcast. You feel me? 12-hour difference. So we'll we'll figure it out with the time. Hey, fact. (laughs) Fact. I'm different, but we'll figure it out regardless. But thank you. Appreciate you. Bench mob. You know the vibes. If you stay ready, like this dude, you don't gotta get ready. Bench mob. Y'all, peace. Y'all. Peace, peace.